much. Uh, and we have $300 from Cran with no comment. Cran, thank you so much for the $300. Uh, folks, we are ready. I've been given the go ahead to start Half Life 2, any percent, no void clip by Malta Miller. Malta Miller, it's all yours. Yeah, hey everyone, my name is uh, Molly Miller and I'm gonna be speedrunning Half Life 2 for y'all. So, uh, yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Alligator. I'm an old runner uh, who done some GDQs in the past. And uh, I'm Wayzone. I did do runs for quite a while and uh, maybe more soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right. So since it's a marathon run, we're going to start from the new game. Uh, timer doesn't start yet, but I'm going to do a countdown as soon as we uh, get there. I'm not going to count down from three. I'm going to count down for two. So remember that. So yeah. But I'll keep in mind that. All right. So Half-Life 2, it has two different engine versions, old engine and new engine. This is new engine. Rise and also with the category no void clip. The main difference with the new engine is that we have very cool movement called uh, accelerated hopping. Not yeah, we shorthanded like ABH or something. So Valve went to patch B-hopping in no old engine, but instead, what well, we got was something better. And, and uh, the, the game basically checks if you're over a certain speed, and if we hold like a specific key the right way, we'll basically double our speed on each jump. So you're gonna be seeing that throughout the run. Gordon goes very fast in this game. Man in the wrong place. It takes like three or four jumps for him to hit in the world. max speed. So wake up. Just a little too Mr. fast. Freeman. All right, so t starting the time is coming up very soon. It's I'm going to do the countdown very soon. Two, one, go. All right, so this trick he's doing here is he's going to save load a few times, and what this is going to do is it's going to lag out the trains. And what's going to happen is the train's going to push into the other train, and he's going to use that to uh, get pushed out like that. There you go. Just clip out of the train, just a quick little skip there. And we get to see a little bit of the accelerator hopping. Here we go. Just bounce off that little slope that you can't even see, actually. It's like an invisible wall, actually. And just make our way through. So we're going to use this prop for a pretty cool glitch coming up here. Well, it's not really a glitch, actually. Because uh, Valve decided to make a cool physics engine for their game, and they thought, well, what players might block NPCs to where they can't get to where they need to go. So let's just put a failsafe in. So what we're just going to do, we're just going to teleport the NPC if they get stuck. So we're just simulating that by bonking them on the head. And certain items are better at bonking them on the head than others. Personally, like the phone is the best. <laughs> I've always, I always used the, uh, the rice box, the Chinese food box. But I am an outdated runner, so the phone's probably the best. I personally use the can. So I guess we should go ahead and talk about the category. The category is any percent no void clip. And you don't want to know what a void clip is because no one likes void clips. So that's why uh, this is basically the main category. So a void clip is basically where you're save loading completely outside the level and just abusing the end game timer because the game doesn't count or the timer won't account for loads. So you'll be doing that for several minutes just staring at a loading screen. And we don't like doing that, so yeah, we made this both, new category. Doc. He was about to board the express to Nova Prospect. Well, Barney, Barney made the tower. That is a good tower. Thinking, I'm yeah. thinking. Alex is around here somewhere. I also love how that lamp is like way too heavy at the top for its own good. It will like if you try to stand it up like a lamp, it will just top over. Very well. And uh, Gordon, good to see you. Okay, Gordon. You're gonna have to make your own way to Dr. Clark. But in lab. any case, Gordon took a really long oh, nap and he woke up in the future. So we gotta go, uh, we have to, he has to expend all of his energy from his really long beauty nap. So there's a minor trick here, or a minor save deletion, which we'll talk about later when it's actually like a more major in the run. The save deletion there is just to delete the door. We'll talk about it in a second, but for now, he clipped through that guard. You can clip through NPCs in this game if they're walking and not standing still, you can just clip straight through them. They try to push you out, but if you go fast enough, you just go straight through. So that's how we got past there, and now, just see some B-hops, or some accelerated hops. 
So, so this level. Uh, oh, go ahead. So this level has a uh, trigger in it, which makes you start taking damage. So instead of going through the level to hit that trigger, we're just gonna jump over this guard's head and go straight to the end. Get in here quick! Keep moving. Coming up here, we got probably one of the wackiest maps in the run. This is definitely the biggest trick of the run, I would say. It's not the most impactful, but definitely the biggest in terms of like how much it's able to skip. So yeah, we're just gonna skip, you know, the longest cutscene in the game with this very wacky glitch that's only used at this one time. And this was found by a random streamer that a random speedrunner happened to be watching. Uh, basically, this trick being found was like the planets aligning with all the stars in the solar system, or excuse me, all the stars in the galaxy. It's very insane that we even found this. So the idea with this is, as we rub the can on the tire, the can like becomes in this like weird glitch floaty state, and then we touch the can, and then we get our own glitched weird Dr. state Freeman, ourselves. I presume. And what will happen is we separate our uh, physics hitbox from our you know, normal hitbox, and do a bunch of cool weird glitches with it. So anytime we crouch, our physics hitbox is separated, and we can touch it like that to make ourselves float again. But also, anytime we hold crouch, it separates again, and what we can actually do is uh, we can teleport to where we set that by uh, touching a prop with our, you know, normal body. And we're going to be using that to do a little bit of a uh, warp here to skip the longest cutscene in the game. So that move was pretty hard there. Got it first try, very good. So now he's gonna hold crouch, so his uh, his point that he set up there won't get reset. I'm Alex Vance. My father. You might have to do this in one segment. Oh yeah, you can't make any saves on this glitch you either. Can make Otherwise, saves. it won't work. You just can't load them. Man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this pallet is what we're gonna use to teleport to that point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna teleport to that point on the same frame as we Give touch the level change to go into the next level, so that we appear there on the next level. Through here. So I just want to set this in a very specific spot. We're basically trying to enter the next map, but then after the map transition, go to the same coordinates we're on on this map, or excuse me, the same coordinates we were when we set up that point. And that lets us fly right past the big eight minute cutscene that we would have to watch otherwise. So yep. the longest map in the game becomes one of the shortest maps in the game. Very nice. And this is a new, newer strat, probably not new, it's probably like a million years old, but I'm old, uh, called Suitless, where normally you do a save delete here, which would let you get your suit back, but instead you do a fun little movement sequence here. And if you smack into that wood really hard. I believe. Building up the drama. There you go, it breaks. And you can skip right through without having to actually get the crowbar. Or the suit. And I guess we should like here. go ahead and go in detail what save deletion is, because here we're gonna use that to actually get the suit. As mentioned previously, we're doing it here. So the idea with save deletion is you make a save, you delete the save, and then you try and reload the save, and the game will just be like, well, there's no save to reload, so we'll just reset you at the start of the map with like all the default items that comes with it. So there we go. This is a pretty cool damage boost. So damage propels you like in a lot of uh, Valve games, so we can abuse that to do some crazy launches. So there's actually a small little thing there. He actually did not look at the guard that pushes the barrel down the stairs because that spawns the uh, second train, and we need that train not to be there to do this really fancy movement on top of this train. It's probably one of the coolest movements in the early part of the game. Get up here. You can get a super launch directly to the end, but that works. That was the maximum Leon and C's for finding this. Yeah, Maxim and Z's is a power combo that is scary in terms of finding strats. Yes. <clears throat> oh, very, oh, it, you're up here. It's fun being uh, in the position where I know the run, but not like all of the new things, because I'm seeing a bunch of new things that are incredibly cool. Like that launch that was just done, probably. When was that found? Like a couple months ago? Or uh, more like a year ago. I'm so I'm so out of the loop. Holy cow! <laughs> so here you're just gonna put all these barrels in one spot so that they all explode at the same time, so you don't have to wait on like extra to explode. Oh, no swagging. It was actually really close. So what happened there is um. He basically landed a ton of hops on the ground because it kind of keeps you stuck to the ground in that little like view section. And you can do that to 
do like a thousand jumps all at one time to instantly gain max speed and just go straight through those barnacles. Nicely done there. So here he's going to use this barrel instead of just breaking this with the crowbar because shooting the barrel is just faster. Explosions make things a lot faster in this game. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun when we get our own explosives instead of just relying on the ones that everyone else puts around. Heck yeah. <laughs> Now they're flooding areas up ahead with manhattan. You'll see, but in the run. So you gotta say, these canals have a lot of explosive barrels. More than, than any canal I've ever been to. Yeah, There's okay. a minor... That's a minor little uh, trick he did there. He threw the box into the manhack to break it out of his way faster than just like break, pushing it out of the way or trying to break it himself. Jumping over to Paladin is the hardest jump in the entire game, by the way. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So you can sprint before you enter the water, and if you sprint before you enter the water, you can sprint underwater. It's very useful for these underwater sections. Here we got the SMG. This is uh, one of the more important weapons because of the fact that it has the SMG grenades that you can use with right click. Uh, so that's gonna come in a lot for uh, some explosive boosting later on in the run. You gotta get man jump. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. That yeah, that's not very good, aren't you? It's probably one of the more annoying rooms because you have to do this little prop climb. Also, prop climbing, by the way, he didn't really explain that because that's the first time we see it actually because he did other strats actually where he didn't have to do it. But we prop saw climbing it on, uh, earlier. No, he earlier, but no, he didn't because he, he did he did, little, he, did the, he did the cool damage boost. But yeah, uh, prop climbing. You can uh, spam, spam plus use, and uh, just jump, like hold crouch and like angle your view up. You climb up walls with prop. We please remove that NPC. They always like to get in your way. Yeah. They see a, a man flying very fast, and they decide to walk in the way. Well, the same that they're like, let me get out of your way. So here we are starting a boatless, and well, boatless is basically what it sounds like. We don't take the airboat, therefore it's boatless, because Gordon's faster. You can see at the bottom of the screen there, he has a little speedometer, and uh, the airboat goes about 800 units per second. We can go 3,500 units per second in any direction, so. Also, here we go. This is always fun. land in water. This is one of the most fun things in the game. So uh, we saved Elite here, which lets us get a boat. And then we're going to move this boat to the next map. And then we're going to use a property the boat has, which basically when you're getting in and out of the boat, that the boat doesn't uh, or gives you no clip, which basically lets you go through walls and stuff. But it's normally taken away when you get out of the boat. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out of the boat in such a way that the boat deletes itself before we can actually get fully out of it which will let us preserve the no clip, and now we can fly through walls. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can't go through levels like this because level changes won't work. Yeah, I yeah, say fortunately. fortunately. Yeah, okay. I don't want... I, this would be a, quite the run if it was just no clip to the uh, change level trigger. So uh, what they did there was... Uh, hit the barnacle, the enemy that, the only enemy really that messes with your position, so hitting that enemy will cause the game to kind of remember where you're supposed to be and give you your collision back, but only like half of it, and we'll figure out yeah, where we'll, the other half went. Yeah, we'll figure out in a minute what, what this is going to be all about. This is definitely my favorite thing that has ever been found in this game, is this, the state that we're in right now. It is what, in my opinion, completely saved this run from being, like, hard to run for people, and then it made the run super accessible and very fun for pretty much anybody. Can we talk about, like, how fast, like, just movement through boatless is? I feel like, I feel like to the average person, this is just, like, insane. We're not really, like, talking yeah. about it at all. We're just, like, nonchalantly just, like, not talking about it. Like, yeah. this is crazy, you know? It is pretty... It is very ridiculous. It's so hard because I've been so desensitized to it, but it's, like, 
Yeah, we're flying through these maps that often take individual maps taking like 15, 20 minutes casually because there's so many other things you're supposed to be doing other than just going to the end. It's supposed to be like going into complexes, fighting combine, getting items, trying not to die. We're just kind of flying past all the obstacles and going to wherever we need to be. And it's pretty incredible that this is the way that this game's played. There's a lot of things that needed to happen in order for boat lists to be possible, like save deleting and this movement in general, and all of it is possible to make this section just absolutely incredible. So you may be wondering how he's avoiding fall damage. If you hit a slope with enough horizontal velocity, the slope won't count you as on ground, and you can use that to negate all your downwards velocity, as well as land in any form of water. So here's that special thing we've been teasing. Oh. Getting Come stuck on. in the wall. I, I believe. There, there we go. go. So props are now essentially holes in the void. So you can basically jump through them as if they're just holes in the wall. And uh, basically our physics hitbox is separated from us again in like a different kind of way. And uh, once it gets in open air, it'll basically just keeps going the same trajectory you had like jumping into the wall, but that's like the wall isn't there. And when it appears on the other side, we teleport to it. So that's why it looks kind of weird. Shout out to Chilean stars with that stripe on the way. Chilean long one. Shout out to Chili and such. Much love. Miss ya. Uh, another fun fact about this little state that we're in, we call it quick clip, by the way, because you can quickly clip through walls. But uh, the only damage you can take is from environmental hazards or falling or explosives. Bullets and melee damage do nothing to Gordon. And we will see some very fun application of that later but it's just kind of very nice that you don't really need to worry about getting shot at. Because this dude's just trying his best, but not doing the greatest. I guess that means Gordon is halfway invisible, maybe? Yeah, maybe. All right, time for the helicopter boss fight. Let's go, let's let's yep. see. We're gonna, we're gonna fight this ch copper. It's gonna chopper, excuse me. And it's gonna be really fun. And all right, we did it. Yeah, chopper we, we is... beat the chopper. Done. We did it, and we and thankfully Black Mesa East is safe, and no one's gonna know it's here, because that helicopter's not here. <laughs> so they're not gonna know. 14, 16 bolts. That's pretty decent, actually. That is that is very good for marathon. That's that's faster better than anything I could do. <laughs> it's uh. I think that beat my best boat list. I'm not sure, though, actually. I wouldn't, I don't That's even very close. I don't even have my splits on this computer, so I can't even check. Dr. I haven't opened my Half-Life 2 splits in, like, over a year. Is that you? You've made it here this uh, but anyway, uh, we're supposed to be in that room, and Mossman, the doctor lady who uh, lives at this place, trying to talk to us in there. I've been hearing about you since long before the Black Mage. I think uh, one of my favorite oh, things about this Black game Mage. is that the cutscenes look really so silly you whenever you're speedrunning it. Because you're, you're either doing God, some wacky stuff go. to try to make the NPCs do stupid things, or you're jumping around, wasting time, yeah, looking like a dummy. And I love it. Never forgive me if I kept you waiting. Also, if you're safe, though, with this wooden piece on you, uh, you can actually make it float, and it can actually make your game crash. We could certainly yeah, don't do that. Extra help. I didn't. That's why We've the game crashes then. So you mentioned before how props essentially make you, or essentially just holes in the world that we can exploit. So we're gonna be using that in a second to do a little bit of a uh, skip in this cutscene. So I'm glad the cutscene's here, honestly, because Boatless is very hectic. Mm -hmm. But we still would like to skip parts of it. So the idea here is Moss. We need to wait for Mossman to basically continue the cutscene by herself without us having to do anything. So once that happens, we're just gonna race her down, and we're gonna go into like her room that she has down there, which has a uh, trigger that basically tells the game like, oh hey, we should be in the second half of the cutscene by now. Let's do that. So it saves about a minute. Oh, yes. So you're just gonna race Mossman down and uh, enter that room here. I love, I love this part so much. So here's, here's a little bit of a save load clipping. You just save load while you're stuck inside something and you can uh, clip down slowly. Yeah. It's, part, it's part of what void clipping is, but it's not quite there yet, so luckily. 
In fact, we used to have a method of clipping downward called prop clipping, but it involved walking into a prop and hoping that it would put you into the wall. And sometimes it would, and sometimes it wouldn't. And so, it was actually kind of RNG as well. Sometimes yeah, it would take a minute, sometimes you could get it in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much based on physics tables that the game decides when it loads. In any case, Mossman's not allowed in here. We have to keep her out. And she really wants to come in, but you're not allowed for another couple seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah, so what happens here is Alex is trying to spawn, and uh, she can only spawn if no dialogue's happening. So we have to block Mossman so she doesn't start more dialogue. And this basically starts a future part of the cutscene that isn't supposed to be playing. Uh, so it's playing the second half of the cutscene while the first half's going on, which means the second half basically isn't being counted for time, that is. Uh, I think Alex knows that we got here on foot, and Eli knows that we broke her record, so... Let me just finish up. Yo, we actually broke a record on stream. Dr. Freeman. Whoa. It's been a real honor. Take a look I'm looking forward board. to working together. Any chance we have a little time for donations here? Feel free to look around. Uh, you can read one. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have five dollars from Bread saying, "Happy to see Half Life Two back at GDQ. Good luck to Malta for me and the rest of Source Runs." Probably go another as well. All right. Uh, we have $15 from Bojangles. My mom passed away from cancer, so what better cause to donate to? Had to donate to one of my all-time favorite games, Half-Life 2, and shooting for the RE Village run. G-Man also requests for RE Village. Um, I do want to remind people, though, uh, that we do have the Lost Judgment Boss Rush incentive uh, coming up, that Gauntlet Boss Rush, and you'll want to see that because uh, it's a rush. Are you blaming me? No. <laughs> All right, so coming up here is going to be a very interesting little uh, kind of like dialogue, like rip skip well that Alex is supposed to do. Alex, really? So, uh, but first well, off, you're just going to stay in this corner, and Alex is going to walk towards Gordon for this one little dialogue Alex, here. Just get her close to this button. But it's very weird. We're going to like basically block Alex's path sure. with a bunch of props and do a little fun. save load when she starts walking through the door, which for some reason does some weird nonsense and makes her like open the door that she's supposed to open in a second early. It's very strange. Honestly, I've never done this trick, so I try my best to talk about it. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's kind, it's kind, it's kind of newer, so. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm interested. I have no idea what to expect from what you just said, so. The problem is that it's, a, it's in a very specific position. So it's really difficult to actually get it to work, but it saves like right. a few seconds if you get it. That's the old passage to Ravenholm. So yeah, in theory, she'll like open the door right here. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No. Yeah, I didn't Dang. didn't get it. So like, she'll, she'll, she'll literally do the animation of pressing the buttons to open this door. So, right. good. so, so she'll just like hit the air and the door will open. I love it. And what? uh, what he just did there was uh, prop clipped before the map transition happened, just to get past an invisible wall that would normally block you from actually being able to get back here to go to Ravenholm. And we have town coming up, which is a spooky zombie town. So if you're afraid of spooky zombie town, you can close your eyes for maybe two minutes and you'll, it'll be all right. Have you guys heard about the gravity gun? What's what, that? A, what's a gravity gun? I don't know. I, I, th I think it was something I've heard before. Isn't, I'm not too sure. isn't that, that's one, that one's an episode two only, I think, right? Isn't something that something like that. you learn in physics? <laughs> I didn't learn I heard, about so, I heard something about a dog. I don't know what that is. What's a dog? But any... Uh... Dog? Yeah, dog. No. Uh, I don't know. There's no dog here. But yeah, the uh, town is quite quick. You just kind of... Uh, explosive boost and then clip your way to the end. Like this double explosive boost plus this cool little... Surf off the wall. Oh man, that was cool. Shoutouts to Momentum Mod. Shoutouts to Momentum Mod. You can play access play testing on Steam. That was a uh, cheese last as well. Oh wow. What? Oh, Ooh. one HP. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I was supposed to do a slow clock, not get to take damage and then fly so the air again. We are done with the spooky zombie town. We're going into spooky zombie tunnels for a minute, though. 
It's quite, it's quite amazing how fast Ravenholm is, because it's pretty. It's a pretty long section of the game. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, every one of these sections is super long compared to the run. It's crazy. Like, I remember the first time I watched uh, Half-Life 2 done quick in, like, 2008 or something crazy like that. Um, I remember thinking how crazy it was that Boatless only took them, like, 20 minutes. Or Boatless. Boated only took them, like, 20 minutes. I mean, they had they had half Boatless. And, uh, they did I have half Boatless. But even still, it's, like... It was so crazy back then, even when that run was made in 2006. It's crazy how far this game has come since then. Cause... Basically, you have cut down half the timer. Right, yeah, like Half-Life 2 done quick, I'm pretty sure it was like 96 minutes, I want to say. And now the world record is in the four, like 40 range, 40 minutes, something. 43 minutes. 43, God almighty, what? you are good at this game. <laughs> I don't know I, what you're talking about. A, a sub-50 a sub is hard. I can't even do that. But yeah, we're uh, we're probably on one of the more uh, well-known sections of the run and one of the more fun ones to look at. Uh, Highway 17. Normally you're supposed to take that car, and this lady gets upset that you don't like her car. But it's not a great car. It doesn't go as fast as our legs do. So we're actually, just gonna... a actually, it does. It does. It's just what? slow to accelerate. <laughs> Does it, can that thing reach? That it, 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 it can AVH. It can go, you can reverse and it has infinite speed. <laughs> so it's like big rigs. Yes. Awesome. That's exactly what I need in my Half-Life 2. It just doesn't accelerate as fast as Gordon does. But yeah, uh, this section, uh, you're supposed to generally, like this map has the crane, if you remember that, that's a fun thing. Um, but... Normally in this section, you're supposed to drive the car around and normally there's all these obstacles you got to get rid of in order to get your car through. Like there will be like a combine force field or those cars that were in the way or whatever. Um, but instead, as you can see, we could just kind of go through an entire map and literally one jump. So kind of better to do it this way and not have to deal with all the nonsense going on in these maps. But again, all these maps have a lot going on on them. Like in this map, you're supposed to go under this whole bridge and there's like a whole thing, a whole boss fight under there and you just kind of fly right over it. It's my favorite map of the game casually and we just skip it, I'm sad. I don't even know what my answer to that is. That's an interesting question. But yeah, uh, that was that chapter. That chapter takes about a minute in the run, maybe even less, and the casual would definitely take multiple hours, maybe. Uh, at least I did when I was younger and played this for the first time. So definitely hit, took me a while. He had a little slope there that was very hard to see. That's how he didn't die. So yeah, all, all throughout the run, doing that, flying through the air, hitting little slopes, landing in water. Mm -hmm. And there's also, there's also another thing that makes like movement really hard, other than trying to like land in these areas. You have uh, where two geometric faces meet, sometimes it just acts like a wall. So we, may, we call it usually getting displaced because it usually happens with displacements most of the time. Oh, oh can you get up? You can usually get up here. I, I haven't actually seen this before. Come on, there we go. There we go. Ooh. This, I like that because that skips the bad section of this map. Uh, another interesting thing about the movement that actually hasn't been in a GDQ run before is the plus strafe uh, technique. I don't know how much you're doing it, uh, Malta. I, I'm pretty sure you only use it when you need to. Oh, um, I switch between them. You switch between it? All right. Well, essentially, plus strafe is a command in both Half-Life and Half-Life 2 that gives you mouse movement. So you move your mouse forward and your character will go forward. So what this allows us to do is if we move, if we hold down that key and move our mouse backwards, the game will think we're going backwards. But instead of us holding S, which is fully going backwards. It's kind of like we're holding a control stick very slightly downward. So we don't lose a lot of speed on the ground or anything, but we still are able to do our uh, accelerated back hopping. Because as long as we're holding backwards or the, moving backwards, the game will allow us to gain speed still. So that's a that one has definitely been very interesting. It's changed the movement a lot for certain runners, uh, making this game look completely different. Now, long, long are the days that are gone of uh, going backwards. Oh, nice, Dwamov Yes, yeah, that's very let's good. go. That's the sickest thing I've ever seen. Oh my God, I love it. This is called tree hug, where you hit that tree really hard. You didn't hit the tree, but that's okay. It still works. Um, and if you hit the tree really hard, you give it a big old hug, you'll fly right up to the end of the map. And normally you have to fight helicopters here, but you know, you get the, you get the idea at this point, I imagine. 
Oh, a little early with that one. So he has to wait for the level to change in order to jump through that wall. And now we're in the prison. We have to go save uh, Alex's dad, if you know, want to know where we're at in the story. Uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You can you can pretty much watch a speed run in this game without getting spoiled, yeah, you, spoiled yeah, too much. You might want, like, the last map is, like, the only cutscene that's going to maybe spoil some things because you have to watch that, but... Other than that, I can't really think of too much that you're getting from the story of this game, other than, like, scientist man jump. Da damage boost. Yep. That's a cool double damage boost with the um, trip mine that is right before. If you chain together multiple explosions, you can uh, get much more height. So sometimes you'll see people, like, chaining a uh, SMG grenade with a regular grenade like we did earlier in town. Sometimes you'll do it with a explosive barrel and a grenade. Sometimes you might even do a triple boost uh, if you need to. I don't know if there's any in this run anymore, but definitely used to be. And we're going to bring this box with us. This is one of my favorite maps in the run. I think this part's really fun, where we're going to throw that box up and we're going to go above the map and climb up this like a little KZ map. Shout out to the portal community with that throwing with the box. Yeah, if you uh, if you like left click and you press E like at the same time, you'll actually do a super throw and throw it a lot further. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> nice. Got a little stuck on Very there. fancy man, but... So back in uh, SGDQ 2014, when Gokneck ran this game, he mentioned something about this map would be super easy if we could just go through walls. And uh, yeah, we can do that. Hey, yeah. And this is a cool little movement sequence where if you jump into that um, barrel in just the right way, you will clip diagonally downward, which will put you right into the room where you want to be. It's a little bit of a tricky movement on that one compared to a normal clip. And that is also a thing. You can uh, bring some momentum with you into clips, and sometimes you need a certain amount of speed in order to make these clips work. Sometimes it's just about jumping into the wall, but there's a lot of different uh, kinds of clips and kinds of setups that you need to do to make them work, and oftentimes saving a lot of time is just down to knowing how the clipping works and being able to make sure it does work every time, which is challenging, but especially when it's as wonky as it is. So right here we get the triggers, which uh, starts for um, the zombies to wake up. Otherwise they're gonna hit you a lot and they're gonna block your, your path, which is gonna be super annoying, but thankfully I skipped that trigger. And this is a long little firefight section where you're supposed to wait for uh, Alex to open some force field, but you just, you know, you, yeah. You do the thing, you jump into the prop, etc. And here is uh, a bit of a complicated map. This one's gonna be quite fun, so... Uh, I'll let Wayzone do stuff for this one. Okay, then. Um, so here he's gonna do some uh, save load clipping. He's just gonna save in the ground and get stuck, give himself some speed. So he's gonna do this to basically get, go through the wall a bit here and, uh, well, it's gonna... Okay, there we go. So he's gonna do that to touch this turret and basically touching these two turrets activate the uh, holdout sequence that's supposed to happen after the first cutscene ends. So it activates it early. But the problem is, is the elevator is moving up and not down, which is bad. So we need the elevator to go back up. Or, yeah, to go back up after the cutscene ends. Right now it's going up right now, but it needs to go back up after the cutscene ends. So we actually have to like toggle the elevator with the cutscene. It's, it's very weird, okay? It'd be kind of hard to explain. So to prevent soft locking, we're gonna put a little uh, prop on top of that monitor, which will pause the cutscene. Because we have to time it so that when the cutscene finishes, the elevator will uh, move down. We'll toggle back down so that it will uh, go back up for uh, Gordon and Alex. Well, Alex isn't here because we, we never we never met. met we're not playing on Steam, though. Yeah, we're if not you're playing, playing on Steam, Steam, then Alex will show up and she'll cause all sorts of problems and make you very sad. Uh, there are not too many problems, actually. Honestly, she gave me all sorts of problems. I, I can't remember if it was her getting in the way or I know Eli dies all the time. Eli likes yeah. to get killed at the end of this map a lot. Also, uh, shout out to Metal Chief for finding a little crab here so we can uh, yeah, pick up both of these turrets. And shout out to Rama for finding his little sequence here so uh, Martin gets blocked and we can actually save two minutes here. Rama, thanking Rama for like half the route as well. They're insane. They found so I mean, much. 
I mean, we can also thank Rama for Void Clip, so, uh... Yeah. Thanks, and, Rama, for Void Clip. And Centarium. Thank you, Centarium, for Void Clip. So you're just waiting for a visual cue for when he can let the cutscene continue so that he doesn't soft lock and can the skip will work properly. And this guy stop throwing nades. Yeah, those things are scary. Oh yeah, we talked about the Steam version a minute ago. 99% of everything in this run works on the current Steam version. There's like some very minor differences. But this yeah. is a version from uh, 2010 that we're running on. It's the still biggest reason as... we don't like Steam is because of the loading times are god awful. Yeah. That's why, yeah. And you well, also that, lose five seconds in Brino one, but that's yeah. my reason at least. I I don't know about anything else, but that was the one thing that was like I can't do this anymore. <laughs> that was the main reason why people didn't, and a lot of people had a lot of uh, problems with with the game starter ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. Oh god, that was bad. I, I, honestly, the game ran a lot better for me on the Steam version. Same, but uh, yeah, I miss Source Unpack. I wish it worked with, because. So some packs the version we used to use, but one of the tricks early on in the run works like half the time on it. It's weird. Uh, we so that version isn't good anymore. We didn't quite see it, but basically, um, when the teleport st starts happening there, sometimes you can see Eli going down the floor. I'm, I'm so worried. So I'm throwing down a nade. Do you ever need to actually like get rid of them, or can you just like leave them there, like and teleport away? So he actually can't ride elevators here, so this is what he's doing this nade boost for. Just want to point that out real quick. So that's why we're going up in this trigger here, because, um, well, we're getting up here so we are actually in the trigger, because if we're not in the trigger, we cannot teleport into the next level. So that's why we have to do this nade boost. So how's the carrot knows for this threat here? Oh god, I miss carrot. So there's no props that we can just pick up and grab in that room, so we just use that orb to shoot that against the wall. Oh, that was the one time that clip. The one time you used the uh, AR2 in the whole game. So anyway, we're in City 17. This is where we started the game, and now we're doing like a uh, you know a, a uprising against the tyrannical rulers and the citadel and all that. Um, but. We're, we just kind of blow past a lot of things, doing the usual. This section is really fun, though. I always really like City 17. It's also very tense. Dog? Dog? What dog? Here? Dog? Dog? Oh, dog? Something like that. Know. But yeah, City 17 is just like a combination of just like pretty much everything in the run. Like cool movement, cool launches, cool damage boosts, quick clips, all of it. Mm -hmm. it all yeah. of it's here. It's definitely like a good little... Because this, this is the last major section before Citadel, which is like the ending section, which has a lot of cutscenes and stuff. So this is sort of like the amalgamation of everything test for the run. Can you do everything well? And if you can, then you'll do this section well. And it can be very satisfying to do these maps really well. Also really sad when they don't go well and you lose your lead. Really cool boost here. Oh yeah, I love this one. Do that, that, you slow. Yeah. This one's not very good. I think I can save it. Let's see if we'll use a third nade on that roof there to make sure they have enough height. But you can do it with like, without that, like he's trying to get here. I might have to redo it. I think I'm gonna redo it. And something pretty convenient about this game is that it uh, for, it keeps two saves for you, so uh, you always have an extra backup save to go. Uh, back into, but as runners, we also generally try to keep some uh, a hard save bind so that we can always make sure that if something goes wrong, that we aren't gonna have to reset over it. Just be like me and run single segments, no saves and no deaths oh whatsoever. Have you, have you finished that yet? Yeah, I, I got yeah. like I I think I got some Duomo if I remember. Heck yeah, I I remember seeing oh. you on that orb launch and I got so sad. I just like saw it fail and I just closed the stream. I was like, I can't bear to see this. <laughs> so this quick clip here is harder than it looks because we actually have to travel through the wall a lot further than it looks in order to make it to the other side there. And he's going to help us get through. He's going to blow the charges to help us through. Thank, thank you. That Conveniently placed box. Is that what it's been as well? 
Well, being placed very well, actually, so we don't have to move them at all. Oh, come on. Hey. So, yeah, when props are moving around, they become more like walls instead of holes in the world that we utilize. So. That was a range of cheap rest draft. Yeah, props are really weird already in this game. Like, it's already a little messed up, and then... Not messed up, but just, you know, complicated physics engine and all that. And then you add in this quick clip stuff on top of it, and props just make no sense anymore. And like, you'll just kind of... BBT as well? Oh, oh, God. BBT being the thing that let us do the uh, skip at the very beginning with the, the tire and losing our collision and all that. Bill's big thrill, found by Bill the Thrill. Yeah. Huge shout, shout out, to Bill, out. Shout out to Bill the Thrill for getting rid of Le Red Letter Day in this game inadvertently. Also shout out to Bob Wombat. Shout outs to Bob Wombat. The snade boost here is quite hard because uh, it's very precise. So you just have to stay on that tiny little railing and then you have to get just the right amount of speed to hit this little slope on this fence behind him to get enough height to actually make it all the way up to where we need to go here. So that's why it's taken a few tries for him to get this. Yeah, I could never figure this one out when I was trying to learn it. It's, it's like very precise and honestly kind of random. Come uh, on. There we go. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice. And it takes you right to the ladder, which takes you right to hit that trigger. And there you go. Those doors, the combine opened those little doors with that grenade boost they did to hit a, a trigger. Barney said you were on the way. Fly right to the end here. Very fast. Mm -hmm. That was very well done. This is probably one of my favorite uh, clips coming up here. So, oh, this one's cool. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to put a prop here. We're going to aim here. This is new. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through, through the wall with this nade boost. So we actually make it through the wall all the way. And then we're going to bounce off a little slope. And if we do it right, we bounce off a little slope and you fly over two walls oh, that's directly cool. to the end. I like that setup a lot. Yeah, so that was a Jillian Such with that one as well. Who found that one? Jillian Such. Chili did. Oh, okay. The the original strat was mainly found by Z's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As as with a lot of things are in this game. He's quite good at finding strats and then bullying people to use them. And he makes everyone better for it. Yeah. Because otherwise, I definitely would be too lazy to learn them if he wasn't, like, kind of pushing me to do it. So, fun fact, this bridge actually still exists, even though it's not showing that it's there. Very nice. We're getting pretty close to the end of, uh... The, Already? The City 17 chapter here. Are, are we already on oh. the next chapter? I oh. can't even remember when it starts. Got the next level when it comes to Citadel 1. Yep. Oh, and this is dumpster launch. See that dumpster? We're gonna launch. Yeah. Yes. So once again, Dr. Fushal. Dr. Freeman. Ooh, nice. Nice boost there. Oh, yeah. So that was the Fushal for that strat. He's not around anymore either, but yeah. Uh, he's also he was, he was guys, 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 there's a dog in the game. Look at him. Dog, there's the dog. We found there's it. There's a dog. We found him. Ah. Ranker Z. And there you go. We clipped into the Citadel, and now we are in the bottom of it, and we're closing in on the last couple... Or this is the last chapter. I don't know the next one is, but... There was a little precise fall and hit a little slope. Negates our fall damage. Or that little edge bug out there. He did a he did a save delete there at the start of this level because we don't need quick clip anymore because there's not really many props that we can utilize and we also need the gravity gun in order to beat the game. So we went ahead and did a uh, save deletion there. Hey, yeah, there's so, the gravity gun. It is so in this coming, game after all. Coming up here is the hardest trick in any Valve game, like by far. So what we're just gonna do here is just gonna. Use the scanner to get out of the pod, because if you hold an object while getting into a vehicle, it won't let you get in the vehicle. So you can do that to make sure we're out of the pod. And now we're on to the hard part. So this is the hardest thing in, like, any Valve game. So let's see if we can pull it off. So... 
Here to skip this pod, he's gonna try and get a really good damage boost, and then he's gonna like bounce just the right way off these little slopes here, and like get through these like very narrow pathways. These pathways are so narrow, it makes it very hard to get through because you can't really turn too fast once you're going fast in the air. So let's see if he can get it. Get it done here. Nice. Very good. It's definitely now, one of the coolest things. And now for the hardest one. Let's see if he can get it. First try. Ooh, oh. no, not first try. Hardest boost. This is even harder than the original one, too, because this is, uh, with we have less armor than we did when we first found this strat, so we can't do an extra damage boost right there. Yeah. But there you go. The hardest yeah, part. There you go. So he had to, like, hit that, and then he had to, like, dodge a lip above him and then squeeze between those train tracks there. It makes it so hard to get that. And but he made it. it is, and this is the end of the map, and... Yeah, that, and especially for it to be this late in the run, it is so mean. It is so mean. Also, and, just to point out, despite the that mistakes, that still saves like a lot more than if you oh, yeah. was gonna ride the pod, like oh, two yeah. minutes almost. And this section here, uh, we're gonna be right on the edge of the level. What we just need to do is just grab the rocket launcher. Uh, when you're basically standing right next to the fizzle, uh, you can grab your items again. Or you can still grab your items when you're not supposed to be able to. So we can take the rocket launcher and we can use that to so. boost around this corner here to save a couple seconds. And now we have the super gravity gun, which can basically do anything. It can do a lot of damage to enemies and pick up these electric orbs, which are very useful. All right, coming up or, here is my, f like another one of my favorite tricks. Yeah, around. there's there's a lot of them. Your yeah. <laughs> so, of them. So he's going to place this monitor in just the right spot and shove an orb under it and go directly to the end of the map, essentially. Base the Perfect height. Yeah, so I also did Yuxba for that one, so Base so. Yuxba, thank you for that one. Also, literally thank perfect you. for, um, God. yeah. Yeah, that was so fast. And it's crazy that how long that trick has been a thing at this point. Like, oh. a, lot of the, a lot of these tricks in this game are over a decade old now. We're old. Yeah, I've been I've been watching runs of this game for <laughs> like way too much of my life. Like, ooh, first try, double pot skip. Anyway, but now we get to chill. I think at first, before we do anything, is to recent donations. We haven't done many of those throughout the run. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we have twenty-five dollars from Bidal saying, "Do you think Gordon Freeman did his physics PhD dissertation on void clipping, and that's why he can rush through this game so quickly?" Speaking of rushing, there's that Lost Judgment Gauntlet bus rush incentive. What's another $100,000 when we've already raised $1 million? Let's go! Thank you very much, Bidal. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, $50 from Lucky saying, had to donate during the game that introduced me to the magic of speedrunning, Half-Life 2. Here's to Malta Miller making good jumps and going fast. <laughs> we have $25 from Barney that just says, good luck out there, Gordon. And a hundred dollars from somewhat saying the old segmented Half-Life who done quick runs were the first speed runs I saw. Great to see HL2 at GDQ. Do we have time for a few more? Yeah. All right. Uh, we have $250 from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for your donation. Uh, and we have... $1,500 from Gravity Pike saying, 20 years ago, my mom randomly decided to use her own blood to calibrate a machine in the hospital lab and got a very early cancer diagnosis after noticing an anomaly. Without this early detection, she likely would not be here with us today. The work that Prevent Cancer Foundation does is so important and can be counted in the lives of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. Thank you so much for your generous donations. It means the actual world to me. And thank you so much for your generous donation, Gravity Pike. All right, so um, we are basically in uh, in Prince's office now, I guess you can say. And there's the there's Marsman who betrayed us. He was with us to begin with, and now uh, she's with Prince instead. It's not going to remain that way, though. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers! He goes again. back and forth. All the time. She can't really she decide, can't, can she? She can't make up her mind. <laughs> she 
she just wants to do science and she just sides with whoever gives her the best opportunity to do science and in right now it's brain and eventually maybe it won't be and she wants to do more science i don't know she loves science doesn't everyone love science in, in this game <laughs> everyone loves science science is amazing I mean, getting getting into the nitty gritty of how this game works and stuff well, like that is like almost a science of itself. Source oh, engine is oh, insane. Oh, All right, I've been playing so, this engine for like half my life, and I still don't understand it. First, you lead me so, um, to the doorstep of my oldest. So yeah, I think I'm gonna already at this point now going through some of the shouts because there's gonna be a lot of people we need to shout out. I already want to give a huge shout to Wayson and Alligator for commenting this run and for being amazing runners as well. Thank you so much for being here. Also, shout to Uso for some of the small stretch he found for um yeah back in 2019, and shout to Maxim for starting this plus stretch journey and finding a loss. Strats. Shout out to Leon for finding Strats. Shout out to Seas for finding a ton of Strats for this game. Shout out to Gognak for being an amazing run as well. And getting the first, being the first person ever to get Stop Drama off. And um, shout out to Chillin' Shots. Definitely shout out to Chillin' Shots. Chillin' Shots is amazing as well. Um, who else? There were some other I was thinking of. Yeah, that was to an entire source and community in general. Yeah, if you, if you want to learn the game, just go ahead and uh, join the Source Runs Discord. There's plenty of resources there. You want to learn how to speedrun this and other uh, Valve games. And also play AG, play it now. Yeah, play AG. Play Half-Life 1 and then play AG. Yeah, and play Momentum Mod as well. And play Momentum Mod. It's on Steam. You can go get access or request access. And it's, a, it's like basically a whole source movement game. You can rocket jump, you can surf and Half-Life 2 movement and all that. And it's made, made by, by Gok Gok and Yeah, made by Gokna. Made by the dude who basically made the speedrun, not made it, but like made it super popular back then. Doing the the GDQ run in 2014. Yeah, the, fir the first ever GDQ run I ever watched. You might find that hard to believe once you get there. It isn't necessary. I agree. It's a total waste. But yeah, there's there's not much going on here, but um, but soon we're gonna get out of this pod, and you're gonna you're gonna see something amazing again. As you've done through this whole run. I definitely love this. Uh, I think it's very. I think half the tricks in this game are just really funny the way they work out, and I think it's just incredible, and I think it's amazing. I'll send them on their way, and then we can talk. Um, we also mentioned earlier about uh, when we found this quick clip, everything got a lot better. Yeah, we went from, like, the amount of players that was active with the game was, like, in the two or threes before before quick clip was discovered. But after quick clip was discovered, we got up into, like, 15 active players. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, it, was, it, it was a very good renaissance period for this game when Click Clip was discovered. There were so many multiple minute time saves that people were making. The run went from like sub one hour to sub 55 to sub 50 to you got the 48 minute. Now it's 43 minutes. I don't even know that that's possible. You're getting also, I mean, you're, you're, you're on our side now. You're getting a 47 here. Watch out, he's gonna. No. All right, so what he's doing here is similar to the very first strat we ever did in the game, we're save load lagging. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna desync this cutscene. And like the other trick earlier where we got no clip in the run, basically we're getting out of this pod, but with a desynced cutscene, the cutscene will delete the pod while we're still getting out of it. So, in theory, in theory. I got it. You got it? Nice. No longer in theory, we now have no clip. Mm -hmm. And just like that one part, but now we don't have any other maps to go to, so we can just kind of finish the game like this. So we grab the gravity gun as soon as it spawns, and we take these orbs, and throw them right into the end of the game where Breen is supposedly. He's trying to teleport away, but we don't want him to. And now we can go back and have a conversation with Alex about... Hello, Alex. Yeah, we're, we're just going to make sure Eli's okay after we beat the game. And if you stand here, she's gonna uh, start her uh, ending dialogue early. Oh, yeah, timing's coming up, by the way. When I say time, it's done. Maybe we still have time. Time. And that's one. Yeah, Doctor Freeman. Freeman? Time, Doctor Freeman? Doctor Freeman. Doctor Freeman. Question mark. All right. All right. Gonna... And this is when Keygasm plays by Od Pixel. Yeah. Yeah. When you get wall wrecked, it is. You do that. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna That's go here and wait for Alex to come out of this elevator because we're gonna look at her funny face. <laughs> Such a funny face. And then you get to fly into the stars. Once she gets here. Yeah, the game's a little messed up, don't worry about it. Yeah, it doesn't like that you're in no clip and you're like yeah. exiting the area that you're supposed to be in. Oh, very smart. Oh, we haven't known each other very long, but... Yeah? Yeah, she's just gonna continue to on this. with the game Whoa, as if it's okay. not over. That's <laughs> interesting. I haven't seen that before. She's got something in her eye. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and uh, Seaman, oh, Seaman also lost his head. Yeah. So I'm gonna just want to say thank you, ATQ, so much for having me. I'm so happy I could get Harder 2 into this. So uh, world rank is 43 40 by me as it is right now. I'm gonna try from now on in the future to get stuff 43. So if you wanna see that, go check on, on twitch.tv slash M A L T E M L L E R if you wanna see some more runs of that. So yeah, thank you very much for having me, ATDQ. And um, go to sources.org or or have the two uh, speedrun website if you wanna check out some forums or learn how to speedrun the game by yourself. We have a ton of uh, stuff for you to learn this game. We even have a full Google spreadsheet thingy that you can use. And a YouTube tutorial as well. But yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right, Maltimiller, that was an amazing run. I hope that plenty of people were clipping that uh, we have uh, a, a $50 donation from LCM Games saying, thank you for including Half-Life 2 this year. Such a great game. I'm putting this donation toward the Resident Evil Village run. The right donation in the wrong place can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Ethan Winters. Wake up and smell the ashes. Thanks for another amazing week, GDQ. All right, uh, folks, uh, we are going to uh, be right back after a quick break. Stay tuned, and we'll be back soon.
All right, everybody, welcome back to AGDQ 2022 online, powered by Twitch and benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We have a $25 donation from Copen 2010 saying, I have to see this gauntlet boss rush from my favorite Yakuza Judgment speedrunner. Good luck on your run, Froob. Um, thank you so much for your donation. And uh, with that, we have a live interview uh, now with uh, Fiesel and the runner of Lost Judgment, Froob. Hey everybody, I'm Fiesel and I'm here with Froob, the runner of Lost Judgment, which is going to be coming up soon. So welcome Froob and thanks for joining me. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, so today people are going to see some strats that they may not have seen before. Can you give us a little preview of what to expect? Yeah, okay. So in Lost Judgment, I had a couple of messages that were kind of surprised that I submitted something that isn't a Yakuza game, but as you'll see very quickly, this is a Yakuza game. Lost Judgment actually contains two different fight... No, that's a lie. Three different fighting styles, which you only mostly see two in the run. But Lost Judgment's changed up its combats quite a lot, and we actually get the ability to almost infinitely juggle enemies... It's something that comes up more towards the end of Lost Judgment's run. It's something that comes up a lot in the boss gauntlet. But essentially, Lost Judgment gives you the ability to juggle enemies. It's an interesting little balance because as a way to kind of balance that, they've made it so that you stop doing damage after a certain amount of time. So there's a nice little balance between keeping an enemy in the air and keeping yourself safe and then letting them drop to be able to get a bit more damage on them. Sure. And, and this run is like half the length of the original, right? And that's a lot to do with it. Yeah, it's a little to do with that. Uh, combat's a lot faster in this game. You start off with pretty much most of the upgrades that you don't have at the start of the original Judgment. There's a couple of other reasons as to why it's half the length as well, which I'll get more into during the run. But most of the side detective stuff, which is what Judgment is supposed to be about, actually got removed from Lost Judgment. It's a little more in-depth than that, and I'll go more in-depth with that in the run. Sure. Um, and now what do you think is kind of the most challenging thing in this run from a marathon perspective? The finale. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt, the finale. Um, much like the other Yakuza runs, if you ever seen any other Yakuza run, if we can help it, we don't go for HP upgrades. And Lost Judgment is a little cheeky in the fact that it gives you a couple of items and a couple of abilities that only work when you're at low or crit HP. So when you have a HP bar, it starts at green, it goes down to red. Yeah, we get way more damage at low HP. You can actually break the damage cap. Now, obviously, during the run, again, one of the difficulties is we don't want to always be at low HP, but our damage increases exponentially. Usually the place where, again, that all occurs is in the finale. When enemies with guns turn up, they can practically one-shot us. So, yeah, the end of the game is scary. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It uh, could be tough. Um, and now... You had mentioned that you have some future plans for this after the marathon is over. What do you plan to do with this game? Yeah, um, currently, if people look at the uh, the leaderboards for this game, you'll notice that my time is a two thirty four. It's actually a two a very low two twenty nine. Somebody forgot to hit record on that practice run. That was me. So unfortunately, that doesn't count. Um, my personal feelings are I'd like to get close to a 225, but also Lost Judgment this year is going to be receiving a little bit of story DLC with mm. our, protagon our protagonist friend Kaito, and that's supposed to be a decent length, so that should also be quite good as like a, hopefully like a 45 minute to an hour long run. We'll have to see obviously when it comes out, but that should give a bit more longevity to it. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's true. Give you a little more something to do with the skills you've already kind of built up. Mm. Uh, now, you've got a donation incentive for this run, is that right? Yes. Yes, the Boss Gauntlet. Uh, the Boss Gauntlet is essentially taking all of the bosses from the main game and putting them into certain scenarios. So basically, I won't spoil the boss's names for people who don't want to know about it yet, mm -hmm. but essentially like you'll get told, hey, you can only use Crane Style, Tiger Style, or Snake Style, and sometimes you'll have all of your skills, some of your skills, or none of your skills. So... That requires a lot of different tactics than you would actually see in the speedrun itself. It requires a good use of the aforementioned juggling, for instance. It requires using a specific skill as well. Um, again, more low HP strats, which are kind of scary at times. There's one fight in particular that, if it goes quickly, you finish it within 10 seconds, but you start literally one hit from death. So 
there's a lot of really cool fights in there, one of which takes about three minutes, and you have to use every single heat action that's available to you. And then there's some that just end really quickly. So it's it's a nice little mix of really cool fight strats that you just don't get to see during the main run. So, yeah, And well, also we'll it's going to include the super boss. The hardest well, boss RPG I've ever put <laughs> out. <laughs> Yeah, well, people have to donate for that, and that's kind of up to the audience to make happen, but we'll be pumping that donation incentive up and yep. see if it gets met. Yep, we'll be pushing um, that hard during the run as well. Absolutely. All right, so uh, I believe that's all the time we have. Um, so thanks, Froob. I really appreciate you talking with me. Thank you very much for having me. All right, well, Froob's got to go prepare for that run. Stay tuned, everybody, uh, and check out this run of Lost, Lost Judgment, which is going to be coming up right after the next game. All, All right, right, everyone. everyone. Um, uh, give, give it, it up, up for Fruit. Uh, and a reminder that Lost Judgment Gauntlet Boss Rush Incentive is open. Um, and please, uh, please help us meet that because that is going to be awesome to see. Um, we have a $10 donation from Tofu saying, putting my donation toward the Lost Judgment Boss Rush Gauntlet. Kosuke has been pumping iron at the gym once a week, my dudes. So let's see that paid off. Uh, we have a uh, $25 donation from Purple Beautifly saying, My grandfather has been struggling with cancer for years. He keeps fighting, though. You can't stop a Marine. Donation goes to Announcer's Choice. Hi, Sabera. Oh, thank you. And the Announcer's Choice is the Lost Judgment Boss Rush Gauntlet. Um, we have $30 from Sylph uh, saying, sending bucket loads of appreciation to all the magnificent runners and commentators and lots of love to everyone involved in the fight to prevent cancer, including those of us personally affected. It's amazing what we can achieve together. It really, really is. Folks, we've been doing so much good for the Prevent Cancer Foundation and the fight against cancer. Um, you all have been so generous. We have broken the 1 million mark so quickly. I'm just blown away by everyone's generosity uh, and everyone's good hearts. We have $50 from Silly Boops uh, saying, GDQ is one of my favorite things in the world. Thank you so much to everyone who helps make this happen. I lost my mother to cancer late last year and it helps me find some comfort knowing that I'm not alone in this. Much speed and much love. All right, folks, uh, it's now time for Castlevania Block Prizes with your friend and mine, Scent. Oh, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Scent. I'm here to talk about prizes, but I'm, I'm a little worried because I was looking at the schedule and I saw next up was keep talking and nobody explodes. So I'm going to do my best to continuously talk during this prize segment so that nobody explodes. That seems like a very important thing. Now, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, you are definitely going to get in at least a $50 minimum donation. At some point today, there are a ton of absolutely amazing prizes you can win. Let's talk about a few of them. So from Wolf Shadow, we have a pair of lovely Half-Life themed patches that I should have taken out of this bag before I put gloves on. This was not good planning on my part. Let's look at them in the bag instead. They're very nice. We've got the Lambda logo here of the Resistance as well as the Black Mesa logo behind it. You can see a picture of both of them over at games.quick.com. They're absolutely lovely and super useful iron-on patches, and they're only a $5 minimum donation, so make sure to get those donations in. Also for a $5 minimum donation, we have this super cool Super Mario 64 cartridge perler from, hey, look, a taco. Where? Where, where's the taco? I, I want a taco. Oh, oh no, that, that's, that's, the, that's the username. My bad. This perler is super great. Now, I talk all the time about perlers, about how there are two kind of thought styles to perlers, either completely solidly melted or entirely see-through. And this is one of the most see-through perlers I've ever seen. I have it up against this cardboard backing here because I'm genuinely afraid at how uh, light the melt is, but that is just an element of quality that it is holding together and is still so magically see-through. This is going to be a lovely perler to frame, and also a perler of a game cartridge is just something I, I really haven't seen anyone done. Huge shout-outs to Hey Look at Taco for sending that us in, and again, only a $5 minimum donation. Speaking of perlers, from Pearl Pop, of course, 
maker of amazing perlers. We have this lovely Richter perler doing the item crash pose. It's iconic in Castlevania. How can you not love it? $10 minimum donation. And thank you so much to Pearl Pop for sending that into us. It's so cool. There are a plethora of amazing prizes here. From our good friends over at Cute Monster Props, we have a pair of lovely little Banjo-Kazooie themed items that are very hard to pick up when they are flat against the desk. But the good thing is you won't have to because all of Cute Monster Props' lovely little coins and uh, statuettes will come with stands so you can proudly display them in your own home. So we have a music note as well as a golden honeycomb, two of the important collectibles for Banjo-Kazooie. The two of them come together as a set for a $15 minimum donation and they just look absolutely fantastic. Hopefully they're showing up well enough. It's a little bit hard to see, uh, you know, the honeycomb shape held up in midair, but trust me, you can see a great picture of them over at gamesdonequick.com and they are absolutely amazing. Now for Meredith Frederick, we have this incredible Castlevania Circle of the Moon themed pin with all the different sub weapons from Castlevania. Going to be a little bit hard to see at this distance on the camera. I'm going to reach it forward here so our cameraman, Angel, might be able to uh, focus it in a little better. Thank you so much, Angel. Huge shout-outs to everyone working tech behind the event. They're making my stupidity make sense, and I cannot thank them enough for that. But yeah, you can see it's got hearts, it's got the holy water, it's got the cross, the dagger, the axe. Such a cool idea. It's an awesome custom pin. This is a $20 minimum donation until the end of Lost Judgment. All the prizes I'm talking about right now, they end with lost judgment so if you haven't already donated for them you gotta donate for them soon and there are prizes you don't want to miss here prizes like uh from uh bacon raptor which by the way Probably one of my favorite usernames ever. Shoutouts to Bacon Raptor. We have an amazing Castlevania clock tower themed clock. It is the clock tower from the Castlevania series, but it is a functioning clock. The hands of the clock are Death Scythe, and it comes with a like 3D printed death looming off the side of it. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get it here in time for the event, but you can head over to gamesandquick.com see an amazing picture of it. That is a prize you absolutely don't want to miss, and it's only a $20 minimum donation. And for a $25 minimum donation from LG, we have this incredible rendition of Velocity, the speedrunning Velociraptor, as a Belmont, uh, you know, whipping all kinds of different lighting fixtures. You might recognize one or two of them to get hearts out of them. This is masterfully drawn. This is not a print. Uh, this is not something that was taken off of a computer. This isn't digital art. This is a one-of-a-kind hand-drawn and hand-colored piece by LG. Thank you so much for sending it out to us. It is absolutely fantastic. $25 minimum donation, but you gotta get that donation in before the end of Lost Judgment or you're not gonna be eligible to win it. And you definitely want to be because it's absolutely amazing. Now again, we have a couple of wonderful day prizes running all day, including for a $50 minimum donation, and I am going to pronounce this name terribly because I cannot speak French. In fact, I can barely speak English. We have a lovely uh, Lady Dimitrovsk uh, statue from Resident Evil Village. It is incredible. You have to go over to gamesdonequick.com, check out some photos of it. Cute Monster Props has gone above and beyond on the design of this statue, and in fact, it has actually been signed by her voice actress from the game. It's so cool. You do not want to miss out on it. $50 minimum donation today. Please make sure to get that donation in. As well as that $50 minimum donation is going to get you one-fifth of the way into being entered for our grand prizes. We have two absolutely amazing grand prizes. From our friends over at Heroic Replicas, we have a trio of lovely Zelda-themed grand prizes. You, of course, win not your choice of, but all three of this lovely Dark Link-styled Master Sword you can see here on our table here. It's got uh, this absolutely beautiful black hilt and pommel with some silver accents to it. We can see the blade here. Why don't I pick it up and show you? This thing's got some heft. I'm not just lifting this with my fingertips or anything. It is giving me a bit of a workout. Hold this out. You can see the Triforce engraving on the blade itself. Absolutely super cool. We have a lovely Hylian shield as well. And of course, the newest addition to the lineup, the Megaton Hammer, which is a 30 pound solid metal hammer. You don't want to miss it. And right behind my head here, I will move my big head out of the way so you all can see this lovely Skytech Gaming Mark 9 gaming PC. 
absolutely incredible machine, 3070 Ti GPU. That's really all you need to know, but if you want to know more, you can head over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the prize description, because it's going to have the full specs of this beast of a machine. Both of them, $250 cumulative donations, so that means you need to donate $250 throughout the marathon. $50 today is going to get you entered into everything I just talked about and even more prizes that I didn't have time to. So make sure to get those donations in. And, oh, okay. Okay, I, do, I don't think I can keep talking anymore. That was that was a little rough. Hopefully, hopefully everything's... That's, that's probably not good. I'm going to go check on that. Hopefully, Pyrocyon will do a little bit better in this run coming up after me. Don't go anywhere. You do not want to miss. Keep talking, and nobody explodes. Thank you so much, Sent. Folks, those prizes are so good. It's scary. Um, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, I have a few more donations here. We have uh, $50 from That Kid Banana saying, Lost Judgment was one of my favorite games to come out last year. Here's $50 for the Boss Rush incentive so we can see even more of it. Uh, we also have $100 from Anani Moose. Um, that's not anonymous, Anani Moose. Uh, let's get that Lost Judgment Boss Rush. Uh, we have uh, $500 from Psychofish uh, saying, uh, really happy to see Lost Judgment being run at GDQ as it's my most recently finished game at 55 plus hours. Can't wait to see it run in less than three. Let's go, Boss Rush. And folks, that incentive is still open. We are still racking up the total on that. So uh, please, please, we've actually, uh, we've raised a, a bunch uh, in the last, probably, uh, since the last time that I plugged it. Uh, we are now up to almost $5,000. It is a $100,000 incentive, but we can make it. There is still time. Uh, so uh, if you want to see that boss rush, and it's going to...